Welcome to today's deep dive into fabricated sheet metal intake manifolds. Don't let the title fool you, today's video is not all about controversy. We're definitely gonna get hands on with this thing. Join me as I put this one together and we'll go over some common assembly issues and how to overcome them. And that's right, we're gonna install it on my Ellis powered 6.0 55 Chevy truck over there. Once it's installed, we'll address the elephant in the room, the controversy surrounding this intake. So grab your popcorn and your pitchforks and stick around to find out if these cheap eBay slash Amazon intakes are or are not for you. What is up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. I've been waiting a long time to make this video and oh man, if this is anything like the internet, I can hear you guys getting fired up in your seats. Uh, hopefully we don't rustle too many feathers with this one. So before we get into the hows, the whys, the whats, and the you're an idiot for buying this thing, let's crack open this box and give it a once over. So we've got the intake itself, fuel rails, gasket, drive-by-wire throttle body, some other little parts and some bolts. I gotta say guys, at first glance, these welds are excellent. So I'm gonna try to use my stock truck injectors here and that's the question I have the most is, will they fit with the height of the brackets for the fuel rail? Now these are all basically modeled after kind of like an LS1 configuration. So the fuel rail brackets are supposed to be the height for LS1 injectors. Obviously our truck injector is a little bit shorter than an LS1 injector, so I'm not sure if it's gonna fit. They do sell some top hats that kind of fit on here to take up the space if the rail is too high which I do have a set inbound, should be here any second. But I've seen some videos where people fit these in and the brackets are the right height right out of the box. So let's check that out first. All right, so I put two on each end in just because I want to put that fuel rail down and test and see how far away we are from our bracket mounts to see if we need to use those little top hats. One thing to note when you put these in, guys, use a little bit of synthetic grease on the tips of them. On the O-rings, just go around them because uh, it's kind of really tough to put them in there if you don't. And then we do the same thing with the top just to make it a little bit easier. All right, so we are gonna need those top hats. These rails are sitting way too low. Here's our bracket where it touches down and the hole is right there, almost right at the top of it. And that thing holds right here on the bottom. So those top hats are gonna go on the top of the injector, which raises this rail up just about the exact height that we need in order to fit these brackets on. The other thought I had is I could very easily cut these down, measure where the hole is and just drill a new hole in here. And these brackets will work out just fine. But then I might run into the problem. I don't have my injector harness here yet of those clips not clearing the fuel rail because it's right up against where it plugs in there. So I think it's better to just wait for the top hat. So it'll bring this up about another three quarters of an inch, give us all the room we need around our injector plugs and just mount everything the way it's supposed to be. In the meantime, we'll get the rest of the injectors in and start assembling everything else on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little block off out of the back, get our map sensor in. All right, so the map sensor is loose in there. It doesn't fit real good. It kind of wobbles around. Um, it'll totally just fall out. So I'm coming up with my own idea. I think what I'm gonna do is um, trim off some shrink tubing and fit it around there and see if I can build that up so I get a nice firm fit. All right, so we got some shrink tubing stuck on there. Let's see. That'll work just fine. All right, let's move on to the old throttle body here. Pre-install these, make life a little easier. Now let's get this sucker flipped over on its back so we can work on the underside ports. So they give you four ports on the bottom here and they give you two on the back where our map sensor is and there's gonna be another one that I'm gonna thread in um, a barb for our brake booster. These four, normally I think I would use this one for your vacuum return to the intake, but I'm not gonna be plumbing it that way. In fact, I'm gonna block all of these off. These are one eighth NPT and this is one quarter NPT. And I'm just gonna stick some block off plugs in there and I'll show you how I plumb up the vacuum on this at another time when we get this closer to running. All right, so to block this off, I'm gonna be using just a teensy, tiniest little bit of pipe dope on this. I mean, you don't have to do this. You can use Teflon tape and that would be just fine. I just don't want any little shreds coming off and flying down into one of the intake runners. So I'm gonna opt to use some pipe dope, which is a messy proposition with this tiny little plug. 
but we'll get it done. So I've got three more block of plugs here. These are all the 1 8 NPT. And these two tiny little pipe plugs are super tiny. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and install these first before my clumsy ass knocks them off the table. All right, so interestingly, these did not go down all the way. The two pipe plugs went down a little bit further, but did not sit flush. And that one, I don't know if you guys can see, but it sticks up still quite a bit. Um, I don't wanna go monkey tied on it and start stripping out threads. It is sealed pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But I'll probably wind up taking this one out at a later date and replacing it with another one of these pipe end plugs. Uh, just because it's, you know, got less of a profile sticking up to it. Not that it matters, it's not going to catch on anything, but for right now, it's all sealed up and we're good to go. All right, so I figured why those aren't fitting so well, even though they're in there real tight. Um, those are supposed to be quarter inch NPT and one eighth inch NPT. And back here is another quarter inch NPT. And this is the fitting that they give us for here. And after running a thread tracer through here to find out, it's actually an M12 by 125. So all of these are metric, which is our problem. So I went and ordered um, an M12 by 1.25 to 6AN fitting. So I'll just run a 6AN connection here for my brake booster, but now I gotta wait for that to show up. So you guys have all been here. That's what happens when you buy this stuff overseas. All right, so our little injector adapters have arrived and as you can see, they look like little top hats. You just slide your O-ring on top of them. This part of it sits up inside the fuel rail, and that part goes down over the injector. And it just gives you that extra space that you need so that those brackets align. So I went ahead and put on the two outer ones just to test and see if our bracket lines up, which it does. So if any of you guys are using L92 injectors or the injectors for the LY6, um, these are the top hats that you want. I forget the part number, but I will put them in the video description or in the comments. So you guys can get those if you want. And it basically just makes this overall assembly the height of an LS1 injector. I suppose you can paint these black, go ahead and scuff them up with a scotch bright and give them a shot of spray paint or something like that um, so that it, you know, it matches with the black here. But honestly, I have a lot of silver coloring on the engine itself. My cylinder heads are uh, have the aluminum color and there's the aluminum script on my valve covers. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep this little bit of um, coloring here for contrast. I think it'll look pretty good. All right, so we're at the back of the intake again, and both of these fuel rails are threaded on both sides. And what people normally do is they'll run an inlet. This is a 6AN inlet. They'll thread that in right there and run their fuel line up on either side, whichever it is. Connect it there. They'll then use this crossover on the front two rails and then use this block off plug on the end and close off the fuel supply there. That's just fine, it works great. I'm not gonna be doing it that way, mainly because I'm gonna be using the alternator in its stock configuration and this crossover is going to wind up hitting the alternators. We're either going to have to cut the alternators back or we're going to have to modify this end or something. And I just don't want to do that. And I think just having less in the front where the steam crossover is and all that other stuff up there would be useful. So I only have the one cap here right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread whatever in here for the moment until the other two caps I ordered show up for the front. So I actually went ahead and locked these two down because that's gonna actually stay in this configuration. The two fronts will have block off plugs. This will have a, you know, kind of my own crossover made right here with this 90 coming straight across. Over here, we'll have a T and then our fuel line will have a pressure gauge um, on it. You can get like a 6AN fitting that has an 1 8 NPT fitting on top of it where you can mount a pressure gauge. So I think that'd be kind of cool. All right, so we're flipped upside down in the back again, and we're gonna start doing these intake gaskets. You can see this is a rectangle port configuration here because we have an LY6 with rec ports. You can see our injector sticking out there. So here's our gaskets. One thing I liked about this kit is it comes with what they call upgraded gaskets versus these uh, really kind of thin flimsy ones that you normally get with these things.
All right, the wager there's a lot of people waiting to hear the controversy and the shit talk and all that. Let's get to it. These intakes have become incredibly popular for three reasons mostly. A, their aesthetics, B, their price, and three, gulp, their performance. But a lot of enthusiasts will argue on that performance aspect. I think without considering wants, needs, and desires, probably the most ideal application for an intake like this would be very high horsepower, especially in that upper RPM band when you're on the track. However, for street cars that hardly ever see that type of RPM or aggressive driving, the difference in performance between a fabricated sheet metal intake and a stock intake may not be as significant. That honestly all comes down to perspectives, which we're gonna get into in a second. In fact, the aesthetics and customization benefits that they offer can outweigh the minimal loss in performance for many casual drivers. I know, I know, that was a little bit civil and kind of generic. Let's dig a little bit deeper. First, I wanna talk about perspectives. Let's start with one perspective where we're gonna downplay this intake. Suppose you have a stock vehicle, be it a Camaro, a Corvette, a Silverado, a Grand Prix, whatever and you have a stock intake on it, stock internals, completely stock vehicle. If you take your intake off to put this intake on, you will have a loss of power and a loss of torque. But it comes down to what I just mentioned a second ago, it's all about perspectives. The largest group of people that are kind of trashing this intake are people that are strictly performance minded. And they're gonna tell you that you're gonna experience a loss of power in a street car, a loss of torque, you're stupid for using it, why would you possibly do that? I can't think of any reason that's a good reason for using that intake, it's just dumb. That's their perspective. Why? Because they can only see things from a perspective of power. Horsepower, torque, squeezing every little drop of power they can get out of the build, and that's fine. But that's not the only perspective in life, guys. There's a lot of other perspectives, and I'd wager that a huge portion of people are doing similar to what I'm doing. Building a car that looks cool that they want to drive around in, go to car shows, cruise around on date night. They're not talking about strictly performance. Yes, we'd like some performance out of the vehicle, but that's not our primary concern. I know that shatters brains in the performance world. How could you not be completely about performance? Because we're not. It's not that important to us. Having a cool car is the most important part of this to us. And I'd wager that's why they probably sell so many of these damn intakes because let's face it, they're pretty nice looking. Here's another really important perspective that no one ever considers. Baseline. Remember we just spoke about a car and it's stock configuration, Silverados, Corvettes, Camaros, whatever. You have your factory intake, you're used to a certain amount of power and performance out of that vehicle. You take that off, you put this on, all of a sudden you're down 10, 20 horsepower, some torque. It's a slightly noticeable difference and you're like, what the hell? That's because you have an established baseline. You're driving a car that has a certain amount of power and torque and you're used to that, okay? People that go to the junkyard and pick up an LS, whatever iteration of LS it is, and they put it in a chassis like this or they're building an old car or they're building your Chevelles, or their classic Camaros or whatever it is that they're building, their baseline is likely at 1974 350 with 220 horsepower, okay? That's their baseline. Anything you do LS-wise, any intake you put on there is gonna be an increase in power. It's gonna be eons better than what their baseline is, okay? So it doesn't matter if you run this intake or not. Yes, you could get more horsepower out of it, but to a counterpoint to that, to the performance guys, they say, well, if you run the TBSS or the truck intake on that, you'll squeeze every drop of horsepower out of that engine as possible. I'd argue, well, why are you running that? You could run nitrous or boost and get even more horsepower than you have. So it's really endless, right? It's just a matter of perspective. In the case of my truck, a 1955 Chevy pickup, this truck came with like, I think it was like 191 horsepower in line six. I think actually it might be even less than that. I'm not sure, I'll look that up. But the point stays the same is that my baseline was absolutely dismal and miserable. I had no baseline. I never even felt this truck. I've never driven it once. It's nothing. So this is an LY6 motor out of a 2007 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. 6.0, and I think stock horsepower in its stock form right out of the factory was about 364 horse and similar torque numbers if I remember correctly. In its stock form, you add some headers, cold air intake, do a tune, you're up there in 400, 420 horsepower, give or take, something like that. I have a 3,400 pound vehicle if I try and really loaded heavy, maybe 3,400 pounds when it's all said and done. We've got a six speed transmission and the 6L80 has a really tall first gear in it. And we've got a 373 rear. Guys, I'm gonna roast tires no matter what I do with this engine in there. It's just, it's already more power than I need. So let's just say I'm at 400 with the bolt-ons that we just spoke about. And I take off that truck intake that was on there and I put this intake on and I drop down 20 horse. Who cares? Doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I'm gonna go to car shows. I'm not racing anybody ever. I'm not going on a track. It just doesn't matter. Listen, the conclusion, the end all be all of this argument, putting it to bed once and for all, what matters most is when you open that hood of your vehicle, 
Do you like what you see there? And when you get in your car and you drive it, are you happy with how it's driving and you're happy with your build? That is all that matters. It doesn't matter what intake you put on there. How you feel about what you've done is all that matters in disguise. Well, I hope you don't hate me too much and I don't lose a bunch of subscribers after this video. It's all fun, guys. This is all just fun and games to me. So if you like what you saw and you want to see more of the 55 Chevy truck get built, Lord knows there's plenty of it to come. Please hit that subscribe button and click that little bell so you get notified whenever we upload a new video that has to do with this build. Also, please like and comment. It really helps the algorithm. It tells YouTube that we're doing a good job and it pumps the video a little bit and I need all the help I can get. Guys, thanks for being here with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, until next time, I'll see you in the shop. Thank you.